Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 40. We're going to go with Jeremy for the Bipcot NoGov license. Yes, as always, this Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the Bipcot No Government license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. So today we have a very special guest, uh, a super exclusive um, first interview with Anarchy Ball, never before seen on camera. Very exciting. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he refused, he Hello. All other, all other interviews until ours. He just couldn't turn down the Seeds of Liberty podcast. So Anarchy Ball, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Well, thank you. Nothing but the best for Anarchy Ball. That's what yeah. I always say. <laughs> See that? He surrounds himself with the bling bling already. So <laughs> I love it. True capitalist. So, um, yeah, so so your page is uh, is getting pretty big. I I see you um you're growing it very nicely and got a lot of traffic. I'm very very happy to see that. And and the other the other uh, Facebook pages are coming up slowly. I I, I um post Indeed. on uh, the we are a growing ball. family. Yeah, <laughs> lots of copycats out there. The other... Oh oh, of course yes. Once they saw the the success from Anarchy Ball, they just took off themselves and so did we. So I think it's a win win situation. Yeah. So were, were you the first of the of the Ball comic series? No, 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 no. Anarchy Ball is based off of the Country Ball series, which, which, uh, we are we are one of the 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 least respected. They call us the Cancer Balls, oddly enough, because they're not supposed to be about political ideologies. They're only supposed to be about countries. So you make stupid jokes about countries and use the little flags in it, and that's what uh, Country Ball started. Well, we decided to go with anarchism to teach people about anarchy uh, using the same ball comic format while insulting the communists. <laughs> I've actually heard people that like, or I've shared anarchy ball, uh, you know, post every so often and pe like, like stone cold statists are like, wow, that is hilarious and perfect and great. And man, I just love you guys. <laughs> Why? Thank you. Thank you. We get it. We get a lot of different people from a lot of different areas putting themselves into the position of Anarchy Ball, which is, which is kind of odd. You know, it's, it's scenarios that we've all lived through, and all the people and statists and communists that, that have talked to us before have sort of influenced how we do things. And, and that's definitely where we come from is, is you know, this, this stuff isn't completely made up. I mean, we do love to straw man the other, the other Anarchy Balls, especially Ancom Ball. Everybody loves to hate Ancom Ball. <laughs> oh, I hate Ancom Ball. <laughs> I you know I don't actually call ancoms ancoms I call them communists because they're fucking communists they're not there's no anarchy in communism. <laughs> well, no, of course not. But trying to convince them that would be an uphill battle with with no win or no end in sight. <laughs> yeah, you got you got you got to you got to love the comms. They try hard. Um, I wouldn't say I hate them though, because if it wasn't for them, I don't know if the Anarchy Ball series would be as funny. I mean, you can only pick on you can only pick on the, the on the U.S. ball so often, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, but one of the big problems we have is stocking enough of the uh, Molotov cocktails to use at every one of our our comics. <laughs> it's insane. We run out of uh, bottles all the time. You would think it would be easier than that. My uh, my favorite uh, my favorite Anarchy Ball uh, comic that you appear in. Uh, is the one where the uh, it shows your transformation from an ANCOM to an ANCAP uh, by uh, you know all of your ANCOM buddies taking your uh, your, uh, your your McDonald's paycheck. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, once once uh, people start to share, and then they start to share everything, and then one guy who makes more than everyone else shares more than everyone else, then it's just a downhill slide. I mean. Obviously, we live in a society right now that is just trying to take as much as possible from the most productive people. And it's completely unsustainable. And I find that uh, most people resonate with that message most of all when it comes to uh, Anarchy Ball Comics. So, so let me ask you a question. Um, were you always Anarchy Ball or did you start as a different ball and make your transformation to Anarchy Ball? Well, I started as a see-through sphere, right? I was a I was a clear sphere, and then uh, somewhere along the lines, the yellow started to come in, and the black. When I realized how much bullshit that communism was spewing out. So, 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 statist ball is just a clear nothingness, huh? 
No, 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 no. I didn't. I didn't start as status ball. I mean, yeah, there's lots of representations of me, but I started out uh, pure, one with the universe, absolutely transparent. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And and then the filthy ideology of of anarchy got uh, got in there. Beautiful, filthy anarchism and capitalism all over this thing. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I'm wearing the Santa hat. This is one of my favorite times of the year. I know most of the time people get sick of, of, of Christmas, but let's face it. This is capitalism right here. I mean, I, I'm glad you took the uh, the anarchy ball. I'm glad an ANCAP took it because we all know that anarcho-capitalism is the only true anarchy. Uh... Well, absolutely. Now, uh... <laughs> I would say that the uh, first anarchy, the, uh, the the black flag itself, would allow for any any other group to, to join in. Now, the thing about anarcho-capitalism is it allows for productivity while still allowing other people to do what they want to do. It's 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 so simple. It's it's A plus B equals C. If you want to be productive, you want to keep your own things. If anybody tries to take it away from you, they end up turning themselves into government. And that's the one thing I want to resist more than anything else is, is collectivism and theft. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of forced collectivism and basically forced by, you know, fiat or bandwagon uh, theft. It's just ridiculous. Oh, absolutely. And it's even worse when you've got people doing it in the name of altruism. Like, I don't know how many times I've run into communists who have who have said that they want to take back the means of production violently. How in the how in the hell could you possibly do anything altruistically when you're hurting people to get that done? Well, you know, because of banana octopus. <laughs> well, the end. Oh, yes, anarcho government. <laughs> well, the the, <laughs> the 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 ends justify the means in their in their eyes. Um, I actually, I actually, ha I actually had one of them had admit that to me the other day. They had to actually admit that, but they didn't see anything wrong with it. That's the scary thing. You That's know, very it, nihilistic. No, no, of course. When it, <laughs> when, it, when it came to that point in the conversation, it was like, so you're okay with using violence? Because it wasn't even a matter of just you know trying to couch it as the initiation of aggression. Like, no, they were openly admitting that it was violence that they were willing to have somebody else use. And I said, you're you're fully willing to admit that you know, you're you're okay with that as long as you get things that you want. And they, yeah, quite proud of themselves. <laughs> and it was like, okay, moving on because uh, I don't know. That's what almost refreshing. Here. Yeah, well, I That's guess. It's almost yeah. refreshing for a communist to actually admit it. <laughs> I just want to hurt people to make society better. <laughs> uh, con communism isn't the hero that we need, it's the hero we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's like if you need a, if you want to make an omelet, you got to break some eggs, right? So isn't that the same argument that Hitler and every other dictator and tyrant made? Exactly. So, well, that's why I, I keep my my uh, ammo stocked, and I keep my guns well oiled and well maintained, because if they ever do get the balls, like me, to <laughs> to come after what they want, I'll be ready for them. <laughs> Man, I, I'm just so excited we have such a celebrity in the scene on the show. <laughs> like, I, I really don't even know what to say. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. I mean, Anarchy Ball is the best uh, every, every day. I mean, every I look forward to Anarchy Ball more than any other page on, on Facebook or, or any other um, social media I'm on. <laughs> wow, that's that's very incredible. Coming from a, a meme master such as yourself, that is that is very impressive. I'm not a meme. I'm not a meme master. <laughs> by it. I only make really good Danilo memes. Okay. <laughs> ah, ah, yes, yes, indeed. Yes. yes, don't forget hashtag Danilo memes. Look for it out there, folks. <laughs> Dave is the, uh, the 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 Yoda of memes, right? <laughs> no, there's people All out there I know that, is make that me they'll look never silly. take my memes of production. <laughs> right. Oh me, the memes of production. Is that a page yet? Cuz that it is actually, if you if you look up uh, my big fat balls, it's a page <laughs> that we made for the fans. <laughs> and basically you 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 use the, the memes that we put out there for everybody so that you can, you know, make your own comics communist uh no 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 fascist, is there a page called anybody. memes of production is that what that page is called oh no 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 it's it's not called memes of production it's just a, a page for everybody to put out their comics uh, i 
I enjoy all forms of uh, see an of anarchy, anarchy ball. You're not comics. thinking. You're not thinking clearly. We need to. We need to go seize the page, memes of production, and start putting out ah. communist propaganda. And then once that page gets to about ten thousand likes, we flip the script on them. Interesting. That's very nice. That, I, I that think, you, uh, you gotta you, you gotta you gotta strategic here, okay? <laughs> strategic skullduggery. Yes. yes. Well, yeah. it's like state capitalism. You know, if if at first you can't blame communist or capitalism, try try again. You know, the the communists blame uh, the capitalists for why things were so bad in their country. So they abolish capitalism. They get more problems, and then once it finally collapses. They call it state capitalism instead of communism. <laughs> I love that cycle. Oh, yeah. Oh, that wasn't communism. That was state capitalism. I'm like, state capitalism is called fascism. <laughs> Commun communism Diction always gets co-opted by fascist. Dictionaries are important. Got to <laughs> define yeah. define basic terminology here. It's always it's always helpful to dispel myths. You know, any kind of any kind of uh, I think you do that a lot, Jeremy. Right? You're like, wait, 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 wait. What are you talking about? <laughs> define well, your words, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Well, you have you have to ask, and usually, you know, a, a lot of the self proclaimed ancoms I come across are the, the first ones who don't want to define their terms. They just want to assume whatever they made their original whatever whatever that whatever they assumed it was the first time they're just going to stick with that no matter what not actually tell you and just keep going um, oh man that, they but, are so pedantic software it's just well, like blah, 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 blah. But, you just hate the it, poor well, you know, blah, blah, blah. i don't know in, in fairness you know they i hear i hear a lot of um and caps making the same argument making the same argument for capitalism which is true as far as i can see that you know it actually hasn't you know free market capitalism hasn't been given the opportunity to tr flourish because the state's always been in the way in some capacity um so when when people say you know well when they then they say oh capitalism always fails well no capitalism doesn't be tried they are making the same argument because technically if you if you're supposed you know if it's supposed to be that whole use the state to free yourself of the state that Marx promised, you know, that whole do this, do this, question mark, utopia. Um, if, <laughs> if, if, you, if that was to be believed, then yes, technically it hasn't happened yet. It just seems to have a funny way of when the state gets a hold of it that uh, somebody really nasty gets to the top <laughs> and uh, they, ne they never get to that uh, using the state to get rid of the state. Um, doesn't actually. But ever with happen. all communism and leftism in general, you find that the first victim of their agenda is mathematics. They can't ever <laughs> figure out exactly how to distribute everything evenly over yeah. an entire country full of people. Right. Well, that well, and and how corrupted they get. You know, <laughs> it's so it's so silly. They're. Yeah, you know, the United States is a very corrupted country, but I, I mean, all countries and governments tend to get corrupted. But it happens so rapidly in communist countries; it's hilarious. Yeah, it's a basic um, economic calculation problem, right? You, you know, when the, when the state takes control of uh, food, for example, they have no idea what to charge. You know, you know how much bread costs. You know, production and transportation, and you know, they have no idea. And so, and so, you have either have shortages or surpluses, and either way, the you know, people starve and die, <laughs> yep. and then they blame. You know what? You see, thank God for the government to give us a bread. How would we get bread without the government, right? Oh, yeah. Well, if you look at the the recent uh, election down in Venezuela, you'll you'll find that the people understand this trick. the The entire platform of Maduro was basically to blame capitalism for everything that he did wrong in that country, and it didn't work. It backfired, and you saw all the people sort of. You know, push it aside and say we're we're done with this. We need we need some sort of economic freedom. Yeah, Venezuela is sitting on the world's largest oil reserve. Everyone in Venezuela should be ha have have a mansion with a with a three cars and and full pantries. But it's it's not happening. Yeah, exactly. but... it's it's the perfect example that even with all the resources in the world, communism still cannot succeed. There will never be any pro post scarcity. Mm -hmm. For a communist society, it just doesn't work. Well, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Danelle. No, no, you go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to say that, that, yeah, that does seem to be the problem. I mean, Dave, Dave mentioned it earlier on the, on the, on the larger scale, it never seems to work on a smaller scale. You know, I, I don't have, that's why I, I, I gave up on picking on the, on a lot of the ANCOMs because, you know, if you want to have your own little commune, go for it. I, I think it'll work. But on a, on a larger scale, it does seem to fail miserably because exactly what you guys are saying with the, with the, you know, the calculation issues. Um, and you know, what, what what are they what are they going to do? They they have no choice. That eventually the people are going to get fed up. But the problem is how long will that last? Because what was it before Maduro? I mean, there was Chavez was there for what? So it was like fifteen years of this. Um, exactly. You know, and yeah, now people are finally fed up. But what did they do? They went. They want. They want. They want control of the government rather than just getting rid of the damn problem. So exactly. they obviously and that's. The, the only real winner in this election is the toilet paper industry because now people will be able to buy toilet paper instead of waiting in four or five day long lines to That's get ridiculous. it. That's so ridiculous. The, yeah. the, the people haven't really won their independence from, from government as much as they have won the right to wipe their asses. <laughs> Yay, statism. Yeah, well, it's, it's, bas it's basically a little reprieve, you know. That's the whole... Um... <laughs> It's the it's the it's the same cycle you see here, just not as severe, because you know it's been a slow plod towards complete tyranny since pretty much the beginning, and every once in a while, when the when the people look back and they point to their you know supposed liberty loving heroes and go, well, see here, this person did this. It's like yeah, if any liberty or freedom of any kind was restored, it was like this little blip. <laughs> in, in in the line, and then every and then it just goes back to the constant of, of you know up, of the pressure, and uh, so like I said, it, it's it's great that people get fed up, but I I almost I almost hate to guess how long it'll be before they fall right back into that again, um, because usually what tends to happen in a lot of these countries around the world is when they, when people finally get fed up enough and they and they toss it off because they're not prepared to handle the actual responsibility <laughs> um they get you know some 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 of the remnants of the old regime or people who thought like that end up re-entering um and just you know switching sides for the time being and then convincing everybody that no no we can still do certain things and then it just eventually people become used to it again and the whole cycle starts over again um well i've and, always and, i've always seen the state as being doomed to its own success. For instance, if, if the state were to lower taxes and to increase economic freedom across the board, decreasing all of the, the uh, regulations and all of the, uh, the restrictions on the free market, you, what you would find is that the government would get a lot richer a lot quicker, causing it to think that it deserves to exist. Basically, increasing its power increasing its size and destroying itself once again so if if you take a look at at the success of a state as being its ultimate downfall you'll see that it is unsustainable to the core yeah yeah that's one thing that i i really took from uh, reading rothbard and anatomy of the state is that uh you know you know it's like uh, people think you know what what came first is it is it um you know, prosperity or government, and what's the relationship, right? And basically, in order to have a government which is a parasite on the industrious, you first have to have a prosperous society for the for the parasites to come and siphon off the productivity. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So prosperity always must precede um, government, <laughs> the formation of a government. Yeah. Well, it's getting even more confusing nowadays because. Basically, governments around the world operate with funds from other governments, and, and they're just printing their own money to such an extent and pushing it off on, onto greater and greater numbers of people, you don't even see the inflation anymore. It's almost as if they're trying to, to tie everybody to the same stone that will eventually drag us all to the bottom. Well, yeah, I think now the... Um... You know the the Federal Reserve is printing so much money, but you know we don't feel it for various reasons, right? One, number one, we can Im export the inflation right to other countries since we have the world reserve currency, as well as the fact that a lot of the that printed money or or digital money is being parked at the major banks, and and they're being paid interest for not loaning out the money, and and so once all that 
all that crap toilet paper. You know, when you mentioned toilet paper, I first thought of currency. <laughs> <laughs> all that toilet paper from other people, they're realizing what a bad bargain they get, and they're going to use it to buy up American, you know, real goods. All that's going to flood back in. We're going to see huge amounts of inflation. And then not, not to mention once the banks release those funds and start, you know, putting into the general circulation, you're going you're gonna to see major, major inflation. But people don't, you know, people are c confused since 2000. Since 2008, they've been printing massive amounts, but we haven't seen inflation. It's kind of confusing. Prices have been going down, right? Gas have you, and have you, have you seen, metals and commodities. Have you seen the um, the uh, the Fed since its inception had an inflation like rate, like a line that was following, and then it, it just it just goes wow. After 71. Uh, no, Whatever. after after 2000. Uh, from 2000 until now, they printed. Enough to hit 800 years of the <laughs> of the uh, if if inflation hadn't changed before then. All oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. I remember reading a statistic from 2006. Like the whole time Ben Bernanke was at the helm of the Federal Reserve, correct? Yeah. He printed he printed like double the amount of currency than that the since the United States started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> And it's, and, but it's and, all and Yellen's digital. Gonna be, and Yellen's going to be even worse, right? Many magnitudes oh, worse. Just like every Fed chairman, it's worse than the previous, in terms of you know quantitative easing. Yeah, well, it's but but that's the that's the whole thing that people don't recognize. That I mean, what you said, Danilo, about printing or you know like the digital printing of money. Most people are under the impression that yeah, sure, they can just print more money. What's the big deal? <laughs> right. That's like and, <laughs> you know, you know, so many people don't even understand the basic concept of of what that what money actually is, what a you know well, versus, versus what a currency is, and what what we actually have, you know, what what it, what is actually in your pocket and what it's actually worth. I mean, we've discussed it a bunch of times before, but I, I know, I, and I wasn't immune to this. That's you know, I way back when I thought the same thing. Oh, they just print it, like you know, the first time they ever had a, the first time I ever remember hearing about some kind of stimulus. I don't know. Clint, did Clinton do one? Maybe I, I can't remember. It was a while ago. No. Um, no, it was. There was definitely. He did one NAFTA. No, there was some. There was somebody who did one at some point, and I just remember getting the check and just being, "All right, great, yeah, free money." And, yeah, you know, yeah, I remember. That. I think that was, was that was, Obama. I think that no, no I think that, was, that, was that was Bush. That was, that was Bush. Bush. Was Bush? Yeah, yeah Bush? that was right the before. That was his last. Yeah, that was yeah, his yeah, last yeah. year. It's a tax rebate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's, just like, it's just like all right. It's like. <laughs> Not, you don't even question it. It's just you know free money. And, exactly, free money. <laughs> Where's it, where it come? Who cares? It's free. I can buy things, right? That's... We're starting to sound like uh, Bernie Sanders supporters now. <laughs> free stuff. <laughs> ah, yes. Feel the burn. Feel the burn, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, so, what's your what's your thoughts on on Bernie there, AB? Uh, Bernie Sanders, I think, is should stick to making dank memes and not to making economic policies. I think uh, the memes that have come out of Bernie Sanders' movement is far superior to anything he would ever do as president. Well, you can tell that Bernie's rattling up the, the Democrats. They're, they're putting the debates on, like, Saturdays at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. They're not doing it in prime time on CNN, you know. Oh, such a grassroots revival right there. He's just... He's just pulling out the base. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Like, they're doing that for, for a reason. They're, they're, they don't want him to upstage Hillary. They want everybody to go, I didn't even see the debates. <laughs> well, that's, that's, a big, that's a big part of it. I, I think he won't, won't stand up against Hillary. There's, there's no way that he will. He, he knows about Vince Foster. He knows about uh, all, the, all the bodies down there in Arkansas. There's no way that he would want to join them. It's, that's ridiculous. He knows who the Mafia Don is. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite um, uh, Bernie Sanders memes I saw recently was him sitting at a computer, and uh, and you see a picture of a uh, you know um, economics for dummies <laughs> textbook. He's like he's goddamn libertarian. I said that. I actually why said he's goddamn that. libertarian sending me this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just I cracked up. So yeah, it's funny. Uh, good. I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but uh, this was in the Washington Post a few days ago. They started marking all the Bernie Sanders campaign literature that they would send out in the mail as spam because of all of the promise, promises that they made. This is a real story, too. Free iPad for everybody. Wow. That's right. I, I, I had actually heard Free something. Free college. I had actually heard something about that, that it was. Yeah, I read that. Oh, That's what that so was. Upset. 
I think I think you can tell the Bernie Sanders supporters when when you when you uh, you hear those people that that click on those free iPad, you know, and Facebook, you see the ads on the sidebar. <laughs> you know, that's the Bernie Sanders supporters. <laughs> ah, yes, like our most famous meme of all times, where the the inbreds are holding up a sign that says "Capitalism has crashed. Start over with another system." And uh, Anarchy Ball says that's because you inbreds keep clicking on the every ad that says <laughs> free iPads. Yeah, I love that yeah, meme. I remember that one. Oh. I love that meme. That thing's killer right there. I know exactly which one you're talking about. Uh, well, again, sadly, I remember that mindset because it wasn't all that long ago that I, I still thought like that. Um, yeah, that's, that's why we have to have patience because it, I know we. I think a lot of us thought like that, and, and it's hard to not laugh at people that still genuinely think like that. Right. So, so is there a Mrs. Anarchy Ball, or is there? I mean, are you just a solo dolo kind of guy? Uh, well, I usually keep my love life secret, but there are several Mrs. Ancat Balls, and uh, they they do several. Wait a minute, are you a Mormon? I'm confused. <laughs> um, some polyamory. Some or? people, some people uh, compare uh, ball morality to to uh, Mormonism, but it's 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 very different. <laughs> Because you gotta you catch, you gotta catch them all. You don't you wear know? any underwear. <laughs> at all. You gotta catch them all, you know? That's right. So, uh... <laughs> this is getting dangerous now. <laughs> no underwear. Oh, me. Oh. So, uh... Lady, Lady Ann Catball, uh, she, uh, she wears a bow. So, if you ever need to know the difference... It's it's the bow. Scantily clad, nice. Very very scantily clad. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I, I I saw that before and uh, was thinking, wow, where is her burka? Um, <laughs> it's very offensive. Yes. I I haven't received any of the sexual harassment complaints yet, but when they realize that I'm sitting here naked, surrounded <laughs> by money, wearing only a hat, I'm sure. That we will receive the complaints. (laughs) (laughs) You're talking about the same, you know, same generations of people that never realized that Donald Duck never wore pants, but he wrapped, (laughs) but he wrapped a towel around himself when he got out of the shower. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know if they'll actually catch on to that one. That's hilarious. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Oh me. So, uh, Anarchy Ball, like, what's your, like, what's your what like do you just are you trying to take over the world with your funny your funny memes and comics or is is what's 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 the plan here i would never presume to take over anything if people like my comics and they like what i do by all means share them and make some of your own but but you'll never take my memes of production those are mine (laughs) i made those those are mine thank you (laughs) oh me uh who's your uh who's your pick to win president this year or next year, rather. Next year, I uh, personally, I haven't been following too closely anything. Uh, I find that much like the Japanese uh, uh, animes that cause seizures, whenever I look at Trump's hair, I go into violent seizures flopping on the floor. It's, it's, it's disgusting. Uh, rolling on the floor. I, I got you. Oh, yes. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so... and seizing. So, so Anarchy Ball, what's your view on uh, incrementalism? Do you think we should elect a RAN to slowly uh, transition into voluntarist society? Uh, for the most part, I am uh, completely opposed to to the idea that somehow just the tip will get us to, to pull out. I, I don't think uh, government has never worked that way. I don't think it will ever start working that way. And um, much the same as... as uh, fucking for virginity. I think that uh, pulling a little bit out at a time is is just as pointless. The, the just a tip is how I got my two kids. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there you go. The truth. <laughs> look, look, look what hashtag Danilo memes is unleashed with Danilo. Now he's actually getting raunchy on the. Oh air. lord. <laughs> oh, I've got what meme. Is, I've got that meme juices flowing. Uh, what, what have you done, Dave? <laughs> oh, the meme juices are flowing. I can't uh, wait well, to get see, on my I phone. Actually, um, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I, I I agree with you. Obviously, uh, AB <laughs> about you know <laughs> the incrementalism thing, just not necessarily uh, being worth the time. Uh, I, I, I would ask more, though, um, 
you know, we, we, we mentioned, you know, Ancom ball earlier and, uh, you know, how everybody likes to poke fun on at them and because, well, it is so easy. Um, but is there any actual real, you know, disdain between any of the balls? Do you, is like any of them that really gets under your skin in particular, or do you actually, uh, just kind of laugh along at all the rest of them? Well, as you've noticed, I haven't moved from the spot the entire interview because <laughs> there's mutualism ball somewhere in this apartment, and I find whenever I move, he automatically jumps in there because I wasn't using it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> what about nihilism ball? I, I'm pretty sure. Well, nihilism ball uh, generally uh, keeps to himself. He doesn't like to uh, come out and play unless... You insult nihilism. He he comes out and starts screaming about Nile Akbar for some strange reason. <laughs> I have never seen anyone defend nothingness as much as he defends nothingness. Right. <laughs> oh me. Right. Oh me. Nihilist ball, man. He gets upset. I heard he's attending a, a university. <laughs> ah yes. <laughs> Yes, the, the university that we dare not speak its name. I got reported for for attending this university and and for seeing how things were working there. And uh, I think uh, uh, I'm still on ban right now. I'll be on ban for another uh, 12 hours or so. It's a nice vacation, as you can see. I'm I'm relaxing on my little <laughs> Facebook hiatus right here, sitting, sitting sitting with my coins and counting them. But no, I find that uh, uh, when you when you offend a certain number of people, it it always ends up turning out like this. I call it Cantwell's Law. Right? <laughs> if, you, <laughs> right. if, you, if you hate a group of people so much that you are willing to sacrifice your, your principles to hurt that group of people, you will end up turning into the group of people that you hate. And uh, with, this, with this nihilism situation, they hate moralists so much that they're willing to turn themselves into censorship moralists to try to take them out of the situation. Much like Catwell and his, uh, his hatred of crybullies. He hates crybullies so much, he's turning into one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. I didn't think it. Yeah. Well, I, 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 see, I, 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 I forgot all about them. I thought it was just a leftist that, you know, he openly advocated using the state to crush. Um, <laughs> that's a whole other issue. Um, but yeah. Oh I yeah, get... he, he's he's all about using the the state to crush the leftist, to crush the uh, the the immigrants, to get them out of there. Because if you don't act, someone has to do something. And I find that's the most dangerous uh, phrase in the history of mankind. Someone has <laughs> to do something. <laughs> it's like but, no. Besides that, uh, I'm from the government. I'm here to help me. Exactly. All right. All right. Well, I mean, well, that, that, well that well that well yeah well that that statement comes because of the first right. Statement. right, right. Yes. <laughs> If, uh, if 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 you were trapped in an elevator with uh, White House ball and Federal Reserve ball, and you had a gun <laughs> with only one bullet in it, which one would you shoot? Well, that's difficult. Yourself. <laughs> yeah. At that point, I would I would go the honorable no route hope. and and take myself out because <laughs> no hope. I, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want to have that's, that's, uh, any that's of democracy that in action. That's, blood that's on gang. my hands. That's majority. I, I, I can imagine right shooting one of them would, would turn out like the Aliens movies with the acidic blood spraying out and destroying everybody in its path. And I, I think <laughs> mostly that's what revolution is. You shoot the alien and then the, the acid eats through your ship and then you die. And that's, that's basically what a violent revolution does. You try to get rid of the enemy and the enemy ends up getting rid of you. So, so let me ask you, I see you adorn yourself with some beautiful coins. So what's your view on uh, precious metals and what role they may play in, a, in our future? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Precious metals have, have always existed in, in uh, society and in civilization as a means of storing wealth and trading wealth. And I think uh, they may not have intrinsic value, but I think having them on hand just in case anything happens, you can, you can trade and, and continue uh, storing wealth instead of having it wiped out digitally with, with whatever may happen with the Internet or how... Uh, how uh, things have, have gone with uh, the regular currency. I mean, let's face it, you could have $100 million in a, uh, a wheelbarrow and it'll be worth just as much of nothing as if it was just blank paper. So 
I believe uh, uh, precious metals have always been a, a very valuable store of wealth, and and uh, that's just how it, how it's gone. So, if Russia goes to a gold back uh, backed currency, are you are you are you applying for citizenship there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would rather go to Anarchadia uh, than, than <laughs> Russia. I think people have forgotten that uh, Putin was a KGB agent, very high level. And uh, anything he appears to be is probably just a trick and probably just, you know, his his masterful skill uh, using PR. I haven't really seen any of the free market that um, that was promised with the association oh, with, uh, uh, Russia's. Putin. Russia's uh, uh, economy was on a rise until these these sanctions, and uh, they just legalized ownership of guns for. Uh, it's not an amendment or anything. They just legalized gun ownership for self protection, which hadn't happened uh, since the Bolshevik Revolution. Well, that's what they say. Well, that's that's, that's a very positive step, yeah. but at the same time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, well, that that's I think that's what you were just, I think that's what all over there was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> about about his his ability with PR and stuff like I don't know do you know anybody in Russia have they actually been able to get guns or is that just something that people are being told so you know I don't know precisely yeah I mean it could be just I some think... bullshit I read I mean no no no, no. I, I heard this I heard similar stories and it's being pre as far as I understood it it was being presented as a fact but you know like well, Russia like, had the worst crime rate in all of European countries I think which I mean crime rate is it only matters what they report, really. <laughs> like, well, I was gonna say yeah, those those type of statistics are meaningless in, in in actual discussions because you have no, you know, you have to see breakdowns to be able to understand what any of it actually means. That's like the whole, all the all the numbers that get tossed around over here about gun deaths and all this, you know, everything gets lumped together. And nobody has any idea what they're talking about. For sure, for sure. So, well, so, what's your favorite book? I, I hate AV? to do this, but I think it's it's time for me to get going. I've got uh, other responsibilities. I've got memes to make and and hearts to break. So, <laughs> oh. I need to be heading out now. Oh, all right. Well, all right. Well, 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 thank you so much for coming on, Anarchy Ball. I know your time is very valuable, and you you've been a great guest, and uh, you're welcome back on any time you want. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. We're proud of you, and tell everyone where they can reach you. All right, you can reach me at uh, anarchyball.com if, if you would like to purchase any of our fabulous merchandise. And uh, you can also check us out on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Reddit, and basically everywhere you could possibly go. We are already there. Do not try to run. You will be assimilated. Anarchy Ball is coming for you. <laughs> Ta -ta. Uh, nice. Thank you. All right, Anarchy Ball. Nice meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> wonderful guest there. Had to run. He was in. It was uh, had some food there. So <laughs> good to have him on. <laughs> wow, that was, uh, that was that, that was interesting. I was uh, when 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 I heard when Dave told us that we were going to have a, a special exclusive guest. I I could definitely I was not see that one coming. Um, but uh, that, was a lot, that was a lot of laughs, man. That was yeah. that was funny. Um, it was, Glad, uh, I, glad he was I, able to fit us into his busy schedule. That was, uh, you know, that was nice. I, um, I, I, I go check out mine and Danilo's interview from a few weeks ago. It just got released. If you're listening to this, go check it out. It's pretty. It's pretty cool. Yes, and, I just, I just listened to it today. It was. Uh, well, what'd you think? It was. Uh, it was good. Um, it was good. Okay. Good. All right. All right now, now tell me what you really think. <laughs> now tell me what you really think. Oh, come on, we're still recording. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, tell me all that kind of language <laughs> online. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm I'm down to wrap up as well. I like a good short show. This way, we we go 45 minutes. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Dave's Dave's not feeling well, so we should probably uh, cut it I short. I feel like uh, doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, wonderful show, guys. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Um, you want to donate to us? Uh, we accept. Uh, uh, Patreon and uh, Bitcoin, please help us out. We love doing this. It's a labor of love, but uh, any monetary encouragement would be much appreciated. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. You uh, you can help us spread the message of freedom and liberty. Yes. So, thank you, everybody. This is the Seeds Liberty Podcast. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Peace. Peace.